let's take a look at why we would ever use a subquery inside of a from clause anyways. So in this video, to understand why we would do that, we're going to try to solve a little query or a little question. I want to try to find the average number of orders for all users. So that essentially would be the total number of orders divided by the total number of users. Now, I want you to know right away that there is more than one way to solve this question. Absolutely. We are going to solve it a very particular way by using a subquery inside of a from clause. We can technically solve this with using two subqueries inside of a select statement as well. Pretty easy, but instead we're going to use a subquery inside of a from clause. All right, so to get started, I want to make sure it's super crystal clear on what we need to do here. In other words, what we are actually trying to calculate. So let's take this data set right here, and we're going to walk through what a correct solution to this question would be for this data set. So one way that we could solve this would be to take a look at all the different user IDs and maybe put them into distinct groups to find out how many orders each user has. So we might say that for the first order right here, it looks like it is an order that was created by the user with ID 5. The next one was for user with ID 3, then a 4, then a five, we then got a one, a one, and another five. So we would read this as saying that the user with ID five has three orders, user with ID three has one, user with ID four has one, and the user with ID one has two orders. So now that we've counted up the number of orders per user, we can do a little bit of math. So we've got three orders right here, two orders right here, one and one. So to find the average number of orders per user, we would take the total number of orders divided by the number of users right there, that's the four, and we would end up with 1.75 orders per user. So that's what we'd be calculating if we were using this little data set right here. So now that we understand what we are trying to calculate, let's translate all this into the world of SQL. How would we do the same kind of operation using SQL? Well, here's one way that we might go about this. We might decide to do a group by. That's essentially what we just did on that last diagram. We could run a group by on orders, and we could group by user ID. Remember what a group by does? Our database is going to take a look at all the different unique values inside the table, specifically the user ID column. We're then going to create a bucket for each of these different unique values. So we got five, one, three, and four. We then take each of these different rows and assign them to the appropriate bucket. So there's the first one. This is for user ID three. Here's four, a five. I'm doing this as quickly as I can, I promise. A one, and then a five. And finally, a one. Where is that? Right there. There we go. So those are our groups. So now we could use one of those aggregate functions to count the number of records inside of each of these groups. So in this case, we would end up with three records right here, two right there, one, and one. So that's the result of doing a group by and then applying a aggregate function to it. Now there's just one little problem here. We can definitely write out a query that gets us this far. We can write a query that's going to give us some data source that looks like this, and then we can maybe select the group by product ID and the count for each one. Definitely we can do that. We learned exactly how to do this back in that group by section a little bit ago. Let's write a, a query just to get this far. And then I wanna point out a little problem with actually calculating the average value. Okay, so back over here, I'm gonna refresh. Then to write out that group by statement, we would do something like select user ID and count star from orders, and we would group by user ID. That should pretty much be it. So if we run that, okay, that looks pretty good. We've got all the different user IDs and the number of orders that each one has created. So now that we've got this data, well, now how do we actually turn this into an average? We need to now take this column right here, all these different values, and find the average of all those different values. You might try to just wrap the count inside of an average or something like that. Well, you could try that. Well, unfortunately, we can't nest function calls number one, 
Number two, trying to take the average of count doesn't really make a lot of sense in this case anyways. Remember, a select statement is going to run over all the different groups individually. So when we write a select, we're essentially saying, give us a value at this row for the column product ID. So for this group right here, I want to select product ID and count star. If we try to wrap that count star with average, that doesn't somehow magically mean that we're going to take the average of all the values in that column. Instead, if we could apply average, which we can't, it would give us just say the average of the number three, because that select statement is just operating on that row by itself. So we're now at a point where it would be kind of hard to solve this using just everything we know right now. And this is why we might make use of a subquery. So if we turn this grouping by stuff into a subquery, we could then select the count column and find the average of all the values inside of it. So we're essentially saying, okay, we got this far, we've got this data, rather than trying to select some individual values out of this, we want to use this as a data source. And we want to do a further aggregation on all the values inside of the count column. So that's why we might make use of a subquery inside of a from clause. Let's take a look at what this would actually look like. So I'm going to wrap this inside of a set of parentheses because it is our subquery. I'm then going to put from right in front of it. And I'll do a little bit of reformatting just to make it look nicer. There we go. I will then apply an alias to it. So I'll say as P. I'm also going to apply an alias to count star right here. So count star, I'm going to rename that to order count like so. So now, without worrying about doing any averages or anything like that, let's just figure out how we can select the count out of this subquery. If we want to just select the count, we would say something like p dot order count. We don't have to have the p dot right there. That's just so you understand that, well, that's why we have the alias inside of here. If we want to be more explicit about where this data is coming from, we could say p dot order count. That means it's giving us the order count column out of that p alias table. So we can run this now, and we'll see the order count. And again, we could delete the p dot, and we end up with the same values. So notice how we now have a single column of values. And because we have a single column of values, we can apply a aggregate function to it. In this case, we apply the average aggregate function, so avg, and wrap that around order count. So that's going to take a look at all the different values inside of order count, inside that column, and reduce them down to one single value, because that is what a aggregate function does. Okay, so let's run that. And there we go. We end up with about 11 orders on average per user. Now in truth, the average is not exactly 11. It's being rounded off here because we are storing order count as an integer. So technically it's slightly something slightly different than 11, but we haven't really discussed conversion of values just yet. So an integer into a decimal value or a float. We'll cover that a little bit later. But 11 is pretty much good enough. It means that on average, a user has 11 orders. Okay, so that is an example of where we would use a subquery inside of a from clause. I want to repeat, you're probably sitting there thinking, Stephen, this was too complicated. There's an easier way to do this without a subquery inside of a from clause. Yes, I totally accept that. There are different ways to do this if you are familiar with some different approaches. Yep, totally agree with you. This is just an example of where we might make use of a subquery inside of a from clause. All right, so now that we've seen this, quick pause right here. A little bit more subqueries coming up.